got his own decaying smell. There's only a handful of females that do the job. I guess it's just too dirty for him. That's nasty. That's some nasty stuff, my friend. Oh, yeah. There are dirtier jobs, I guess. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Yeah, it's definitely a dirty job. Combat troops all slog through the heat and the mud and the muck. Sooner or later, they all get dirty. But there are some jobs in the military where filthy, well, it's a daily occurrence. And I'm talking filthy. In this episode of Recon, we're going to meet some of the people who perform the tasks that are downright dirty. And they don't get much attention or praise for them. We start off on the Chesapeake Bay with the crew of the U.S. Coast Guard cutter James Rankin. And they're performing some really filthy tasks. But hey, somebody's got to do it. Oh yeah, yeah, it can get very dirty. Um, some buoys are a little dirtier than others, depending on exactly where they are located. The James Rankin is responsible for buoys marking the commercial shipping channel from Baltimore Harbor south to the mouth of the Potomac River, then all the way upstream to Washington, D.C. That's 368 regular buoys and 55 special ice buoys used only in winter. The ones that we're working today mark the outer limits of the Chesapeake Bay, the channel going into Baltimore. I guess the best way to describe it is picture yourself being on a highway without uh, any kind of speed limit signs or directions. It's just a, a big mass of water and uh, it's pretty much a free-for-all. So that's why the buoys are there. It's early June, not even officially summer yet, and the crew is working in 100 degree plus heat near the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. I don't know what possesses anybody in their right mind to do it. We all probably thought it'd be fun. Always heard sea stories about it, how enjoyable it is, decided to try it. And it's a niche that some people really do well at and other people really don't like it at all. And you just kind of found that niche? Oh yeah, I, I enjoy it. No complaints. The process involves pulling the buoy out of the bay using a crane and pulleys. That unleashes a frenzy of activity on deck. Replacing solar panels and lights, scraping barnacles and assorted sea scum off the buoy, and its massive anchor chain. What I like to describe our deck department as a finely tuned NASCAR pit crew. Everyone has a designated job. Our hard hats are color coded. You see a person with a white hard hat, it's the person that's in charge. You'll see blue hard hats, they're qualified deck riggers. And the green hard hats, just that, they're green. They're still learning the job. Needless to say, I got one of those green hard hats and the chance to try my hand. I was maybe a bit tentative at first. <laughs> what are we scraping off here? What is that stuff? Oh, it's got, it smells awful. Stagnant, a bit of musty. It's got its own decaying smell. Depends, I guess, on where the mud comes from, to what's in it. To how bad it smells. What would your wife say about this when you come on snow like this? Maybe that's why I don't have a wife. <laughs> what your wife say about how you come home and how you smell? I mean, this is, I mean, does it go away or? I guess it kind of goes away. I'm used to it by now. Um, first thing she says when I get home is take a shower. So <laughs> I'm assuming it doesn't go away too well. An 18,000 pound cement block anchors the buoy and its attendant slime in place. That has to be hauled up and cleaned too, and the heavy chain that attaches the anchor and the buoy often has to be serviced. The pins that link the chain together have to be superheated to be reattached. This could be my big chance. All right, so basically what I'm going to get ready to do here is make that look like this. This. Very secret to this. Hit it hard and don't miss. What happens when you miss? It cools down and you got to hit it a lot longer. So he's not going to reheat this again for me? No, no. Hit it! Up, hit,
intense workout in 105 degree weather. You're right here. How do you do? Yeah, how do you uh -huh. do? You would have done all right if you pulled his skirt up and hit it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hate it! So what did I do wrong? I, I'm actually, honestly, on the first hit, I missed it. You missed it, it started cooling down. And so then your first two to three hits have to have to be on. If not, it starts cooling down, makes it a lot harder to bell out. But what was she doing at the end there? Um, it's called peening. What you did with the sled, you just made it flat. Yeah. And I went around the edges and made them uh, round it off so it's more of the okay. What was that? What's the point of that? Uh, the pin don't fall back out. Okay. The job is strenuous, it's potentially dangerous, it's certainly dirty, but somebody's got to do it. Did you think it would end up like this? Um, hey, Claire, ship's taking no, it straight! but I don't mind it. Coming up! It's a job that you know when you're done. There's no BS to it. So to me, the satisfaction is, you know, you take something that's kind of, you know, yucky and messed up, and uh, you clean it up, you fix it, and you put it back in the water. And then when you drive away, you know that you've left the Mariner a, uh, a nice buoy that uh, marks the channel and uh, they can safely transit up and down the Chesapeake Bay. That's not to say there aren't some women who don't mind getting their hands dirty too. about the Coast Guard, I'll still think about helicopter rescues and boating safety and drug interdiction, but I'll also think about channel buoys and how important they are and how hard and dirty this work is. They may not be pretty, but there are plenty of mission critical jobs all across the military that have to be done. I for one am thankful I don't have to do this every day. Thanks to the crew of the Rankin and the U.S. Coast Guard for doing it. Somebody has to. I'm Sergeant Brian Buckwalter. Thanks for watching Recon.